Hello everybody and welcome to another quick tip guide from your Photoshop educator myself Philip Cal here at the Shaw Academy. Now our previous lesson we were dealing with selections so we're going to talk about getting those perfect selections and just giving you a few extra tips and tricks to get you on your way. Now as always I'm going to demonstrate this in Photoshop and the first thing that I really want to point out is that like any sort of tradesman make sure you're using the right tool for the job. So if we wanted to highlight this perfect square here, we can do so by using our marquee tool, our rectangular marquee tool, and holding shift to get the perfect square. If you do not hold shift, you can still make it, because obviously the shape is already there, but keep in mind that that's more for a rectangular kind of selection, while holding shift will constrain our properties. Now, obviously folks, as I said, the right tool is always what's needed, so do keep in mind that there is other selection tools that we can use at any time to make these kind of selections. So our lasso tool can be used as well, as long as it's our polygonal lasso tool. Now, if you find yourself at any point that for just some strange reason, you can't get the right tool to work, okay? If you can't make those awkward selections that you can't get, that you can combine the tools together. So for at any stage, if we need to, we can overwrite our selections. If we need to say we've already got a selection such as this rectangle and maybe we wanted to add more to it, we can come in here. You know, maybe we needed to fill the gaps in. This can be done with any of our other selection tools. By using our add and plus, our subtraction and our intersect to get exactly what you need, okay? So do make sure that you use the right tool when you're actually making your selections. Also keep in mind that we can combine all the tools, so sometimes the right tool is many tools, okay? Much like any trade that you've ever used before um, as well, okay? Now folks, I also wanted to talk about using stuff like our Magic Wand tool, okay? Because the Magic Wand tool can be quite nice to use, but it does have a few more options that you need to be aware of. Now our sample all layers will always sample every layer that we're working on, especially uh, really nice to use when we're working on massive projects. But keep in mind this one here, our contiguous. What this will allow us to do is sample only the pixels that I select. So with contiguous turned on, I can select this nice square shape. I can then select possibly the circle if I wanted, or I can select both as I'm going through. With contiguous turned off, and I make my selection, what will happen is it will actually select everything with the same color range. So let us control D to deselect, and I'll select the red with contiguous off, and we can see that it has selected absolutely all of the red colored images here. And then obviously I can add in the blue if I need to, because I have my add selection on here. So let's turn our contiguous back on, deselect everything, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my contiguous here to select this circle here, meaning that I've only selected the outer side and not selected the inner arrow. If I do want to select the inner arrow as well, I just make sure that my plus is on and I can do so. If at any time, I can turn this to our subtract and I can remove my selection. And then subtract again to move here. So the magic wand is a really nice image to use. It's a really nice tool to kind of make those awkward selections based on colors. But keep in mind the contiguous folks and always keep in mind of your tolerance as well. Now, also folks, when it comes to our quick selection, I want to note that at any time, I'm just going to zoom in here. But depending on the image you're working on, sometimes your quick selection tool, it's best to use it in terms of the background instead of the actual foreground, okay? So as we try to select this image here, you can see that it's a little bit more difficult because it's trying to pick up on the edge detection. If I use it in terms of just selecting this very bland sky, it's a lot easier. So do keep in mind that you might have to select the background instead of the actual object that you are originally trying to select. When doing so, 
we have to also realize that because we've selected our background and this is not our actual selection, we did want to select the foreground here, that what we have to do is go to select or use our shortcuts, but inverse, okay? Shift control I, which is obviously command shift I if you're on a Mac, hit our inverse and we now have our background. What we'll do then is we mask, allowing for this more dynamic sky to come true. As you can see, I had the two images already lined up, but the mask will hide our background and allow this nicer sky to come true. I can then kind of move this in place. I can move it around to kind of get whatever kind of sky I would like instead. Looks a little bit more like it's gonna rain now. Okay. Lastly, folks, when you're making any sort of selections, if you have not seen it, you will see it in my later lesson. But always keep in mind of your refine edge or your select and mask. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to select our background. We're going to inverse and we're going to come into our select and mask. It is available on all of our selection tools. But keep this in mind as I will demonstrate it in our next lesson. And this will allow us to remove certain things like our halo effect and to really get those better kind of selections on hair and everything like that, okay? So it's a nice thing to use. It makes for cleaner, smoother selections. Getting the perfect selection. So that's my quick tips on selections today for yourselves, folks. Do keep that in mind and I'll see you all back in our next lesson, okay? Thank you very much, folks. Enjoy this and enjoy your lesson today.